Looking to set up your Xiaomi CW300 or 400, you have come to the right place. So get your box or boxes ready, but note that we are only gonna be going over the CW400 setup as it's pretty much the same for both. In this tutorial, we will be covering the unboxing and content of the CW300 and 400, first time installation of the Xiaomi app, the initial setup of the device, and the basic use of the device in the app. Let's get to it. In the box of the CW300, you will find the CW300 camera, weather protective tape for the power cable, weather protective cover for the ethernet cable, a power cable, all the mounting screws, a mounting sticker to make mounting easy and efficient, and lastly, all the guides and literature on the CW300. In the box of the CW400, you will find all the guides and literature on the CW400, a power cable, the CW400 mounting bracket, weather protective tape for the power cable, mounting sticker to make mounting easy and efficient, all the mounting screws, and lastly, the CW400 camera. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna install the Xiaomi Home app and we wanna do it correctly. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go to our iOS store or in this case, Play Store. We are gonna search for Xiaomi and we can see there at the top, Xiaomi Home. So we are gonna click on that and we're gonna install. Once it's installed, open the app. Now we need to actually create an account so we can say sign in and then we say, create account. Now South Africa is correct. We'll put in our email address. Then I've read and agreed. Next. Enter the verification code that you see here. Now you can see I've already created one. So you would need to go and confirm your account. So in order to progress, I'm actually just going to log the account. But if you don't have one, just follow the steps and sign in. Okay, allow while using the app is advantageous because a lot of the products from Xiaomi do rely on geographical data. So it is advised to allow while using the app. You can allow or not allow notifications. In this case, I'm going to allow because for an example, on security cameras, you will get a notification saying, hey, something's happened. So it is beneficial to allow notifications. Okay, we are officially in and we are ready to get going. Just a couple of things. Notes on the top left, you can see their studio. Note that you can go into family management and create additional profiles by pushing the plus over there and create a family group name. We are not gonna do that now. You can also go into Xiaomi's website and further customize your profile. But we are in a profile here, we've called it studio. So for example, I don't live at my studio. I have a different profile for my studio as I do for my actual home address. And we are ready to start adding devices. Okay, let's start with the setup tutorial. The first thing that we have to do is we have to plug it in. Now note that I am gonna plug it in and then it's not gonna be visible on camera because one of the most important steps is to set it up close to your network router. So make sure that when you are setting it up, you are in close proximity because once it's set up, you can disconnect it and then go connect it where it's meant to be. It just needs a strong connection for initial setup. Let's start by plugging it in. Now I have to move it closer to the router using an extension cable. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna open your Xiaomi Home app and we can already see the plus on the top right hand side, we're gonna push that, add device, and we can see that it's there. If it's not, again, don't stress, you will be able to find it in the menu below. Now you will need to synchronize it with your home network. Put in your home network's password and next. Now note at the bottom, it'll say connect to device. Xiaomi Home will use a temporary Wi-Fi network to connect to the device. You must say connect. Now you can scan the QR code, but if you don't want to do that, you can actually say no QR code available, add manually, and the camera will actually read out a password to you that you need to put in. Now that it's given me the password, we can continue. So just be patient during that previous step because it takes some time to set up. It just needs to set itself to the network, set itself to your home app, and then it's ready to go. Now you can actually unplug it and take it to where you want to, but we first need to get through this step. So we want to put it in a room. We are going to say studio and we're going to say next. We're going to keep it the same name. It doesn't matter if it's a CW400 or 300. We're just going to keep it the CW400. We're going to say next. Now this is additional settings, display large cards on the homepage. This is good for when you want to be able to just log in and see the information or the recording or what's happening immediately. 
we will say next. And you can invite your family so that anyone in your family can share in the access of the camera. Works for everything in the Xiaomi store or the Xiaomi app. So we are gonna say don't share for now and continue to prompt. And we can see where I set it up is actually connected. So I'm gonna go and fetch the camera, bring it back into the studio. And there it is, set up in the studio. We are gonna first look at the base functionality in full screen. It's the same as the application. I just put this in a 16 by nine or landscape so that you can see more or have an easier view to look from. But the first thing that we can see is a play button. If we push that play button, we can see a preview of what's happening. Now, in order to action things further, we can see a couple of items on this menu. The first one here is expand. So by expanding this menu, we can actually see in a full screen on our phone or tablet what we are viewing. But we are going to go back. We also have the ability to pause. That's not obviously pause the camera, that's just pause viewing. The camera will still work in the background. So we are gonna say open. Now this is the main menu for the camera. The first thing that we're gonna focus on is the three dots at the top right hand side of the screen. Now if we go into those, we will see camera settings, home surveillance, manage storage, Xiaomi home secure, and then general settings. We are only gonna be focusing on the main ones now that we've set up the camera and we've done the firmware update. Now if we go into the camera settings, we can see the image settings firstly, we can put timestamps, which is recommended, and we can put smart frame. The one thing that I already did was I rotated the image because you can either have it standing up or mounted to a ceiling. So if it is mounted to a ceiling, we are gonna need to rotate that image. I'm not gonna do that, but this is where you would rotate and say, okay. When we do that rotation, you will see that we'll move the timestamps with it. Next, we have the night vision settings, black and white night vision mode and smart full color. So it is best to leave this in the middle. The presets are generally the best when it comes to these types of apps. However, you can adjust this to preference. I'm going to leave it there. Then we have sleep. And this is something that you could do to say, well, actually, I don't need the camera to work at a certain time of day or a certain time of week. And we can schedule that for a sleep time, or you can just say sleep now, which again, I don't recommend. It's not the point of a security camera, but we can say, okay, I don't need this camera at a certain interval or certain time. We would push plus, and then we'd set that as we want it. Next, we see the dynamic operations. The first one is PTZ, gesture rotation. Now, these are just gestures that you would do with your fingers to say, okay, cool, I want this to happen, this to happen, this to happen, or this to happen. Next, we have motion tracking. And the first thing is we get a little warning saying long-term rotation of pan tilt may cause displacement and will be automatically recalibrated regularly during use. So this is something to note because if it's recalibrating during an event, it could be a bad thing, but it is still a good thing to have motion tracking. So I would put that on. Then we have sound and light alert in which we can play the sound effects. This is a yes, no, and you can record your own siren. Let's play this one. Okay, that one's just a siren tone. It's very quiet. You can't really hear it because this would be coming out of the tablet that I'm using to record this. But again, you can record your own one screaming, saying something, or just capture something off the internet. Then we have a light alert, turn on the lights, and we can have always on, blinking quickly, blinking slowly. I would say blinking quickly because that is reminiscent of the police, which is very good in a security situation. Lastly, we have the effect of time and any time is the effect of time. We have a duplication of auto detection. It's best just to put that on. And what this will do, it will basically scan an area periodically, in this case, every single 10 minutes in order to ensure that nothing's happening in that specific area. Note that this does have a wide angle. So depending on how you set it, you may already have the angles that you want covered already. However, if it's a large area, it is recommended maybe to do it every five or 10 minutes. And this is again to your preference. You would know where you're setting this up best. You can also put the detection period on anytime daily and the frequency. Lastly, we can put it to 360 degree panoramic or a fixed area. Again, this is depending on your preference or your situation. Then we have camera calibration, and it's good to always calibrate it once you've set it up. Note that during the other settings, it would auto calibrate, but for first time setup, it is good to calibrate it. Now that it's calibrated, we can go back to that menu and into the camera settings, and we can see the status light 
and data usage warning. Again, we cannot get through everything, but lastly is reboot device. It is good to play around with this to get the best settings for yourself. Next, we have home surveillance, and this is encouraged to have this on on a 24 hour period with your sensitivity on medium to high, depending on, again, what you feel you are most comfortable with. And I do recommend that you have detection push notifications because if anything happens or if it does pick up a human or movement, it will send a notification to your phone to let you know that something's happened. And we can see this in event notification type for motion detected or person detected in the surveillance area. So if you know no one's supposed to be there at that time, you can literally log in with your phone, see what's happening, and make an appropriate action. Next, we have manage storage. There is an SD card plugged in, and I recommend that you do get an SD card. Anything between 128 to 256 gigs is recommended. You can get away with smaller. It just obviously gives you less to be able to record on, depending on the quality in which you're recording. So we can see their status is normal, and this is just to give you a indication of what's actually happening with your storage. Next, recording mode. So we can see here it's set to always record. Now this depends on how much storage you have available. This is recommended to put on only record when motion detected because it's not gonna fill up the SD card as much. Now one common misunderstanding when it comes to Xiaomi camera products is that you have to have a cloud subscription, which is not true. Having a SD card is just as effective, even more effective because it's actually hardwired into the camera so that you are able to pull that off. So in order to operate the camera, and to keep the camera going, you do not have to have a subscription to Xiaomi. It's just recommended if you want this to be all done on cloud and you don't want to lose the data. Now you can go through the other settings as you want because there's just too many to go through in one tutorial, but device name, manage location, share device automation, the update of your firmware, help and feedback, additional settings and so on. What we need to really look at is what's happening on this field because this is the field that you're gonna see when you access the camera. We've only gone to those three dots so far. So going from left to right, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually gonna show you what happens with the camera. Now we'll be able to see the camera and the app at the same time. Noting that if you tap on the screen, call it our first option, we have the ability to turn the camera off, the speaker on and off, we can change the resolution, you can change it to auto 360p. This will obviously affect the quality as well as how much recording it would do. First on the left, we have a alarm. Now we can see what it's going to do when it detects motion or how you would set it depending on the settings that you put. Now this is just a test. Basically it's gonna say it's gonna go for 30 seconds and you can stop it if needed, but let's go. that was loud and it would be a deterrent to anybody. The second thing that we have is a two-way intercom. Now, I'm not gonna speak too loudly because we're gonna have reverb. Unfortunately, I don't have a friend in the studio, so I have to do this by myself. But you can imagine that if you set this up outside or somebody is at your gate or someone's at your fence and you want to be able to communicate with them in two ways, you can hit this little button over here and talk to that person, what are you doing? by my fence. So really nice control there. Then we have the ability to take a picture. Note that if you're doing this for the first time, a little notification would pop up and it would say, do you allow this? And this will save to your phone, or you can do a recording where this will start to record. And lastly, we have the manual adjustment of the camera. So if you go up, it'll go up. If you go right, it's gonna go right. If you go down, it's gonna go down. Now, one of the cool features over here is say for instance, this was something that we wanted to look at regularly and we hit the forward back arrow, we can select favorite areas. So if I go back again and I say, okay, what I want is I like that as my favorite area or an area that I wanna manage. If I go to the back arrow again and I say plus, I'm going to call this tool board and add it. Now, when I go back into the manual and I say, okay, let's quickly go as far down and far right. Well, not as far right. That is the CW300 that it's looking at. And if we go back there and we say tool and we tap on that, it's automatically going to go all the way to that favorite. So you can have all the sets of favorites so that it can automatically go to where you want it to. Then below that, we have surveillance, playback, storage management, and time-lapse. So on surveillance, we would have set that up already in the settings 
settings, but we can see that we have an event calendar to say that at this time a person was detected or at this time motion was detected. You can go back into the settings of this by going to the top right hand side and these will be the same settings that we saw earlier. Next we have a playback. Now these are the things that would be stored onto the SD card. Now this is today and we can see gray and we can see yellow bars. The yellow bars are for motion or for people being detected. The gray is just your normal standard surveillance. And importantly, at the top, we can see cloud or SD card. We have selected SD card, depending on how you have set it up. Then we have storage management, and this is everything that's stored on the SD card. Local means your local device. So that would be on your actual cell phone, the two images and the one recording. And there's also a calendar there. And lastly, we have a feature which doesn't have to do with security, but more luck luxury is we've got a time lapse so we can do things like recording clouds or the sun going down so you can see that automatically is record clouds and it's got five hours or we got a scheduled recording so you can set the intervals and when it takes pictures now guys that is it for the setup i do hope that i answered all the questions on how to set this up know that you should take your time and set this up properly because if you're going to be relying on this you do have to give it the diligence that it's due so that it can do its job properly and that's it you should have successfully set up your device and should be using it capably hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you do have any questions please feel free to let me know in the comment section below and i'll get to it as soon as possible or hopefully a community member gets there first cheers goodbye